Tarzan and his two companions, Terence O'Rourke and Kyluk the Raptorian, escaped the public whipping post in the square before the Palace of Tor through the assistance of Wong Tai. They elude their pursuers and make their way toward the elephant paddocks. In the city of Rator, Dorno has freed himself from his bonds and has wounded Temur, the Raptorian traitor, in a sword duel. To prove his accusations against Temur, the Frenchman returns to the traitor's apartment with the Shan of Rator and Uka. In the city of Tor, Atea, white queen of the yellow men, charging Jeanette Burton with being the cause of all her ill fortune, orders the white girl to the chamber of serpents. Horror struck, Jeanette watches a huge black king cobra, its beady, lidless eyes staring coldly into her own, glide swiftly toward her from its den across the room. Hissing angrily with hood extended, the deadly serpent, weaving slowly from side to side, pauses directly before Jeanette. Do not move, Jeanette. Be perfectly still. Doctor, Doctor Wong. Oh, oh Doctor Wong, thank heaven you come. Yes, it's all right now, Jeanette. A moment while I unbar this door. There. Come now, my child, honey. That shot may have been heard. Now we refasten the door. So, come now. Oh, that, that awful reptile. You were just in time, Doctor. It was rather close, my dear. Atea dismissed me at once after you went out with your guard. I followed and shot the snake. But the pistol, where did you get it? I have never been without it since the fight in the arsenal in which your revered uncle... Oh. Uh, yeah. However, I found it among the arms of our friends at that time. Oh, thank heaven for that. But where are we going now? To my own private quarters here in the palace. You will be safe there. We have not far to go. An unused corridor leads directly to a secret door in the rear of my apartment. Yes. Here. Up these stairs. Dr. Wong, what has happened to Terry? He, Tarzan, and Kyluk are probably well concealed by this time. You need not worry about O'Rourke as long as he is with Tarzan. But where could they hide without being found at once? I might make a close guess, my child. Tarzan is an intelligent animal. Oh, I do not say that in disparagement of his character. In fact, I greatly admire the man. Nevertheless, having lived his life among jungle beasts, his instincts would naturally be those of an animal. Then you think he's returned to the jungle? By no means. I would wager my place in the Temple of Heaven that Tarzan is still in Tor. <laughs> Were I a there, I would most certainly examine the elephant paddocks with the minutest care. And here we are. This little door opens directly into my sleeping chamber. Yeah. You will be safe here, at least temporarily until Tarzan has put into execution his scheme of revolt among the pit slaves. Did Tarzan admit that he was at the bottom of that? Oh, no, my dear. As a matter of fact, he said nothing. But as I intimated, Tarzan is an extremely clever and resourceful animal. I... I suppose you told Atea. No, Jeanette. I fear I neglected to mention the perfectly obvious fact to her. Uh, now I am going to leave you for a short time. Do not open that door to anyone. But where are you going, Dr. Wong? To ascertain, if possible, what has happened to our friends. In the city of Rator... Darno has wounded the traitorous Temur in a sword duel, and leaving him apparently helpless in his own quarters, has exposed him to the Shan and Uka. Returning to the traitor's apartment with the two Ratorians, they find the chamber deserted. But, but, Monsieur Le Shan, it, it is impossible. He must be here somewhere, for he was wounded not fatally. See there, but... my father. Mm. Blood on the floor. He cannot have gone far. Find him, Uka. Also, Poltar, bring them to me in the council chamber. At once, my father. And to the Tar chiefs, you will transmit my orders to advance at once with the entire army. And we? We follow and overtake them as soon as you have found these traitors. And they have been dealt with. I go, my father. Come, Paul Darno. 
In the council chamber, we shall await Ukal's return. Uh, the Atar Tamora traitor, I would not have believed it, nor of Poltar. They have both been close to my throne. You have fought the Torians often, Monsieur Lechan? Aye, often. And we have beaten them, though they are more numerous than we. But in the last three battles, they seem prepared and anticipated our tactics. In how many of these battles has Temur fought? In the last three only. He was too young to take part in previous engagements. By Rator, you are right, young man. Temur has been in league with Artea since he became a Tar chieftain. I did not say so, Monsieur Lechan. Mm. But appearances are against him. Me, pourquoi? What, what has he to gain? Vengeance, instilled into his heart by his Torian mother. She was captured by Tom Tamor, his father, in the raid upon Tor. Because of her beauty, Tom Tamor made her his lawful wife. This ingrate is the offspring. And Poltar? Tamor's protege. But here, the council chamber. As soon as Ukar returns with those two, and they have been fed to the lions which were to have devoured you, we overtake the army. Then Poltar is a pure Atorian, Monsieur Lechan? Aye. A strong warrior and an excellent chieftain. Uh, that he should turn traitor, I do not understand. Monsieur Lachan, it is only human to err. A man may unwittingly commit a grave mistake which a vengeful person may use to force him into still others. What mean you, Paul Darno? At the time Uka was captured by the Torian patrol, it was through a mistake made unknowingly by Poltar. At the command of Temur, he flashed a signal to your jungle patrol from a tower here in Rator. A signal? Ah, oui. A signal which Temur very probably knew would be intercepted by the Torians. By the ten names of the evil one. How know you all this? In their plotting, I overheard this incident discussed. Mm. Polkar advised, refusing to reveal our plans to Atea. Temur threatened him with exposure of that former mistake, warning him that it would mean his death. Ah, this Torian dog, this spy of our tears. When Uka brings him Great back... Order. Huh? Temur and Poltor have vanished from the city. What? Both have passed through the gates mounted on fast-riding elephants. They ride with your orders as advanced scout guards. Uh, their capture is your task, Uka. Do not return without them or proof of their death. Go. Come, Paul Darno. We ride with my warriors to the attack upon Tor. Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk, eluding their pursuers by way of the housetops, have come to within sight of the elephant paddocks of Tor. From the roofs, they drop to a balcony, thence to the deserted street below. Faith, my lads, I'd, I'd rather be topside of them roofs than down here in the street. If we're not seen immediately, I'll be missing my guess. Uh, we can't stay up there and get to the paddocks too, O'Rourke. On the rooftops, they can see us from the palace. Come on, keep close to the buildings. Now, it is fortunate for us that the Torians were driven by the elephants to seek refuge in the buildings near the square. Otherwise, we should long since have been retaken. And if we are lucky enough to get to the paddocks, how are we going to get inside? We can't pass through the gates in broad daylight. It won't be long before dark, O'Rourke. Tarzan is right. The sun is already low in the heavens, and the paddocks, as you see, are not distant. Now what? That gong. What the devil does that mean? Listen. Begotty, tis a fight or a fire. <laughs> and tis seldom an old rock has run from either festivity. The lion gong. It does not warn of battle or fire or rook. The lion gong? What does it mean? It is a warning, Tarzan of the Apes, to clear these streets of all but armed guards and warriors. Atea's savage hunting lions are being released to prowl the streets of the city. Hunting lions? Turned out to run us down, eh? <laughs> Faith, tis fine ideas the lady Atea's after having bad cess to her. It works in our favor, O'Rourke. The 
fewer people on the streets, the less chance of our being seen. Ah, uh, ye would look at it that way. And I don't know but what you're right. I believe I'd rather take my chances with the lions than with the Torians. But Atea's hunting lions are far more dangerous than those of the jungle, friends. The queen's lions are kept in a state of ravenous hunger, never being more than half-fed. Holy St. Patrick! Listen to that, would you? Them fellows are no cubs. Arteo's hunters are full-grown lions, or rook. They are fed on the flesh of men, slaves. If we chance to meet one of them... We'll worry about that when and if Numa crosses our path, Kailu. And tis a worry I don't like to have on me mind. There's the paddocks, and the gates are closed. We'll get over the wall in the rear of Black Maluk's corral. They won't look for us in the paddocks, much less in Tantor's feed shed. Come on, down this way. Oh, another quarter of an hour and it'll be dark. Are you waiting for that before we try getting over the fence? No, we'll be inside by dark. Here, see that white streak down the wall where I'm pointing? Yes. Tantor's corral is on the other side. Come on. Straight for that spot. It's only a few steps. Look, Tarzan. Between us and the paddock wall. Holy St. Patrick. The brute's as big as a church. And no tree to climb within sight. Oh, let's get out of here. Stand still, O'Rourke. I look. With a savage growl, the huge king of beasts gathers his great tawny body for the charge. His yellow-green eyes, fixed in a baleful glare upon Kailuk, blaze hatefully. Suddenly, with a roar of savage fury, Numa leaps straight for Kailuk. 